and Jimmy Jazz, as well as our seasonal favorites like Hickory Farms and Calendar Club. Stop by to see Santa in Center Court and capture a keepsake memory for your family with a variety of family-friendly events, entertainment, and opportunities to give back. Paddock Mall is your holiday headquarters. For all the season's details, visit paddockmall.com. All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. It's really a nice-looking Tuesday morning, isn't it? Uh, 60 degrees, temperatures today climbing to 82. It says rain, but it doesn't usually give us a percentage. And lately, they've been doing something other than the 10, 20, that's like 8%, 12%. They're getting really, really scientific about this stuff. Do you know the other, oh gosh, it wasn't the other day. It was a few months ago. Um, There's a Facebook page that I'm, you know how they have these Facebook groups? Well, I'm a member of a Facebook group that is like the schools I went to in New York. And uh, so somebody posted a picture of... um, a lady who was, I think, my fifth grade teacher. I should remember. But anyway, we all remembered the teacher. We just, I just can't remember what grade she taught. And uh, so everybody was saying, oh, my gosh, I loved Mrs. Lowell. I think was her name, Mrs. Lowell. I loved Mrs. Lowell, Mrs. Lowell. Great. Well, Mrs. Lowell is still alive, and, and, um, and her daughter was reading her all the things we were saying about her. And you, it's amazing how much difference a teacher makes in a person's life. I don't remember every teacher's name, but I remember quite a few of them, actually. And and mostly from the younger grades. Isn't that weird? I actually graduated from Marion County Public Schools because my family moved here when I was 17, and I finished my school in, in Denellans. So I don't know how many of you realize, even though I seem like a New Yorker, I'm really... I'm really from Denella. <laughs> uh, Dr. Heidi Mayer is in the studio. I've been mispronouncing her name all these, this time. Uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Mayer is the new superintendent of Marion County Public Schools, and Kevin Christian has been with the school system forever. Yeah. And in fact, I have some <laughs> some Christmas music that Kevin produced. That yeah, we'll Kevin's be, a wonderful pianist. We'll be playing in awesome. uh, about a week and a half, I guess we'll start to play that yes. stuff, right? So good morning, Dr. Heidi Mayer. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us Oh, today. you're welcome. And Kevin, good to see you. Likewise. It's only been a few months since school ended last year and last time I was here. You look sharp. <laughs> well, you look good. Clean up okay, I guess. <laughs> you and the mayor are the best dressed guys in Ocala, right? Well, yeah. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> that is a compliment. And, and uh, Superintendent Mayor, nice to meet you. Right. Have you have you been sworn in yet? Has that all happened yet? Yes, that yeah. is November 21st. Okay, so mm-hmm. how does it feel? Was it, is it a cool experience to go through the campaign and, and the, that night when you won? Was that exciting? That night was great. Yeah. The campaign, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I thought I knew all about politics because I watched The West Wing. I oh, knew it all. Yes, I knew it all. Oh, yes. so this was the first time in pol- anything political? Anything political, yes, yeah, well, besides running for eighth grade secretary in junior high. It yeah. is. It, it, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> was it dirty? Um, it was It was different. Did it leave a we'll bad just, taste in your mouth? Um, the end result is worth it because now we're doing great things for kids. Well, so there you that's go. That's a good attitude. Yes. Yeah. I, I often think that. I was like, gosh, the only. Th- I mean, we have some really nice political candidates in our community, and we've said this a lot that it seems like on the national scale, people get really nasty, and this year was a great example of that. But locally, we don't usually have that, but every now and then we get a little hint of something nasty, don't we? But the again, the outcome we are we jumped right into it the day after on that Wednesday, and we are moving forward and doing great things already. Do you know what I already love? The fact that you say we, because it's a team, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It has to be. Yeah, it yeah. has to be. Yes. So, how are you? Fabulous. Yeah, and you're getting ready to start. And in, in, uh, what is the boots on the ground philosophy? What does that mean? That means we are reallocating resources from our district office and getting them out into the schools. So instead of the traditional sitting behind a desk at the district office, we are out and visiting schools. Our deputy superintendent of curriculum and instruction, Dr. Grantham, his mission is to hit every school by Christmas, and he's making great strides to do that. Oh, just, wow. just yesterday, he hit six schools in one day. So he's out uh, doing that, meeting people, seeing principals, talking to teachers. Our other deputy. Uh, Dr. Craig Ham, who's in charge of the operations side of the house, he is out meeting uh, the bus drivers, uh, the maintenance workers, hitting the boots on the ground on that side. Just of the house. to hear their input to their see input. maybe there's mm-hmm. something that you're not picking up on that needs to be tweaked or fixed or done away with. Correct. And correct. are there any things yet that that uh, is on the radar? Well, yes, um, we are um, again. 
when we are planning to get our boots on the ground, we needed to look at where the greatest need was. And of course, we have some uh, schools that are struggling. So that was the primary focus. So we uh, committed to them what we call principals on assignment, principals with proven track records, some uh, that we brought back from retirement. And we have them as uh, in those schools every day every day in the morning and the afternoon and just there to support principals um, right, right, right. to to get information from the district to them immediately a quick turnaround and so again it's it's boots on the ground but it's faces it's resources it's immediate response to these schools are you are your hands tied a little bit from Tallahassee or maybe from Washington DC or are you free to make decisions that you feel are best for the schools the school board and I have a lot of, of I'll use the word power. We mm -hmm. do. But we also have to follow the rules of Tallahassee. And I'm all about local control. I've said that uh, for forever. But until we establish our credibility and show that we can do things on our own, uh, we have to play by Tallahassee's rules. So right now we're in that. Uh, we're figuring out um, what the the rules of Tallahassee are because they are monitoring us on some schools. So we're looking at that. We're going to get things straight and then we'll move into more local decision making. When, when a school has a, a uh, a grade that you're not happy with, mm -hmm. and I would think that'd be anything other than an A, right? Correct. <laughs> a, a is the grade you want. But it, when it's a grade you're not happy with, um, how does that? How do we come up with that grade? I've always wondered. Do you take? Do you average out the scores of all the kids in the school? How does that grade? How do you arrive at that score? Well, unfortunately, it's not we, it's Tallahassee. And there is a huge formula that actually uh, I sent a piece of it to a friend that works at Lockheed Martin who has a degree in engineering science. Wow. And he couldn't figure That's it out. That's what it takes? He couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yes. Well, then don't even try to so, explain it to me. I'll uh, never get it. A lot of, of the grade comes from um, the, the FSA, the Florida Assessment, which has some issues so we have to look at that uh, i have an issue with a student's future a third grade student's future and that teacher's livelihood being based on one assessment but those are the rules oh, right now. Right, those right. are the rules so we continue to move forward in preparing our students um, to be successful on this assessment uh, we are empowering our teachers to teach to do what their college educated brains right, and their compassionate what, hearts that's what i to feel. do yeah. and we'll take care of everything well, else. Well you know one of the things as talk show hosts that we get because the phone lines are open and people will call in with their opinions when they criticize the schools uh, I, I always <clears> say <throat> this Robin has two children that did superbly. High honors. I do also. I have. High honors for Alex. Yes and, and it's like okay well why is it possible that one kid can do well and another kid doesn't do so well if you're blaming the schools? I mean, maybe it's not always the school's fault. And also, we have a, a kind of a unique situation because coming into a radio show, usually you get the cream of the crop. So we have kids coming in here from the public schools who are outstanding. We see them all the time at the Student Media Festival, mm -hmm. right? They're excellent. Uh, and, and the private schools, we have them coming in here. They, they're doing out. So we see the cream of the crop. Even the homeschool kids that come in here, they're in here because they've done something outstanding. So we see the cream of the crop. Uh, but you see the whole picture, right? Is it, is it skewed? Can a, can a school get a low score because of a handful of, of kids that are not doing a good job? Maybe that's what I really want to ask. I want to pause for a minute because you say because of, of kids who are not doing a good job. Not getting good scores. Not getting good scores. Can a, can a school grade be skewed? It can. But I need to look past that. We need to go past that, and we need to look at why they're not. And that's another mission of my administration. Instead of just blaming or saying, uh, this happened, I want to know the why. Right, right. We need to know the why of everything. It's not easy, and is it? It's not. In short, uh, kids come to us from all different backgrounds, but it's our responsibility to meet their needs where they're at, and we need to allow the teachers to do that. We can't continue with a cookie-cutter curriculum and a cookie-cutter way of doing things. What works at East Marion may not work for SPAR. So while we have a goal for our district and objectives and standards, 
every teacher needs to be able to teach the way those kids learn best as long as they are making progress to teaching the standards and achieving those outcomes. It's called differentiation. Yeah, if you, I, I guess to, to make it simple as simple math, if there was 100 kids in a school and 10 of them were doing poorly with grades mm -hmm. and you could follow all those kids home and you found that, oh, they've got, they've got personal issues that they're bringing to school sure. and you could s simplify it in my little example, sure. um, then maybe it would be simple. But, but, but it's not fair, I think, to the other 90 kids if the, their school gets an F or their school gets a D, right? But what are Because doesn't that take money away from the, from the school? So are you blaming those children because of their home environment? I am blaming um, a, a system, I don't mean the local system, mm -hmm. I mean the Tallahassee mm -hmm. viewpoint, on taking 90% taking of the kids who are doing well and mm -hmm. putting them into a low grade. So they, they now go to a school and they don't feel as proud of it as they should or as they could. But why do we dismiss those 10 kids? We don't dismiss them. Exactly. Another, well, I guess what I'm trying right. to say is the whole grading thing just well, bothers me. I, and I understand that. I'm, I'm for accountability, though. We need accountability, uh, but it is how we are using these numbers. Are we using uh, these numbers in this data in a punitive sense, or are we using it for improvement? For improvement. And I think That's what we that should be doing. Exactly. And I think traditionally the state has not used it for improvement purposes. Rather, right. it's been for punitive right. purposes. Right, exactly. But you hit on it. Even uh, an even deeper issue are those kids who come to us from backgrounds that aren't aren't as favorable as maybe we'd like them to be. So that's another outreach of my administration, and we've got to do more to reach out to these families and encourage them to be a part of the system and give them opportunities to engage in our system. So um, I use the example all the time of my son, Jack, who graduated last year from Lakeware High School, and, and he graduated IB, honors, he's off in college, he's doing great. And his father is is an assistant principal in the system, knew the system. I knew the system from working in it and being at the college. But there were so many opportunities we didn't even know about that we had to fight for. So I'm thinking to myself, if we had to fight for opportunities and we're part of the system, what about these parents who want the best for their child yeah, and don't know how to navigate? So we're going to help these parents navigate the system and make okay, it easier. Okay, so, so that you just made it a little bit clearer mm -hmm. as to how the boots on the ground philosophy yeah. will play a role in your, um, in your work and what you're trying to do for the schools. We need to op just open up the doors and, and more communication like this, reaching out to your listeners, letting them know we're here, we're here to help, and uh, just making things more transparent on all levels. And uh, that's why you have outreach programs like Take Stock in Children that bring our in foundation, the yes, to bring uh, mentors into the public school system to keep the children focused and to try to bridge that gap between the schools and the children and the parents. Exactly, and, and our Public Education Foundation does such a great job. I have a mentee at Lakeware High School, and I'm as proud of her as I am of my son Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got that, and again, our administration is looking at ways to further engage parents, and it's more than just involvement yeah showing yeah. up at a spaghetti supper or the book fair which is important but we want them really engaged and taking ownership of, of the system yeah i would like to see that too i don't that that seems like a harder job than than getting the kids to do well it seems like it's a harder job to get the reluctant parent who wants to stay home and watch wheel of fortune to come in to do something at the school or or read to their child reading 15 minutes a night to right, your child right. makes such a difference it doesn't matter what age i read aloud to to jack until he got through middle school and then he was done with that but uh, it, it it's such a Wrong bonding books. time yeah. <laughs> it's such a bonding time as well so yeah but little things like that yeah, yeah. and reading is is so important Ooh, it yes. really really is because it opens doors and makes the children go beyond what they think they want to do as a career as to what they really have a passion for doing exactly and and if we look at it if you can't read there's you can't do anything so reaching mm -hmm. out and making sure our kids are not only uh, they can read mechanically you know they can sound out and do the phonics and all that great stuff but that they love reading that mm -hmm. is so important yeah it's, a, it's such an honor heart. to be part of the uh, student media festival it's our yes. way of really 
being immersed for that one day. Well, no, because we do the judging, too, so it's more than that one day. But we get to see the cream of the crop, and not just their ability, their scholastic ability or their creative ability, but at the actual event, how polite, how nice. You know, and, and you know, I've, uh, gosh, in, in all of our lives, we have people who just look like they'd be wild, but they're not. You mm-hmm. know, and they're so misunderstood, right? I've, yeah. I've, well, I don't want to name it. Larry, right? somebody said that about you, that you look <laughs> wild. They always say that. They always say that about me. I know. I don't get it, Kevin. I don't get it. All right. Can I can take a little break? We'll take a little breather. We'll be right back, and uh, we'll continue with this. Okay. <laughs> i got to fix this. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, areas of low clouds and dense fog giving way to some sunshine. It'll be unseasonably warm with a high of 80 to 84. And partly cloudy and mild Tuesday night with some fog around late tonight into Wednesday morning. Tuesday night's low between 58 and 63. Later Wednesday, some sunshine and warm high 77 to 81. Thursday, intervals of clouds and sunshine and cooler with a high of 70 to 74. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is Vanessa Lane Jennings with the Jennings Law Firm, located here in beautiful Ocala. Join me every single Friday at 1030 for Legal Lane. We'll be discussing various legal topics such as family law, criminal law, contracts, and much more. So this is your chance to call in with your legal questions and have them answered. That's every Friday, 1030, right here, WOCA, The Source. Veterans are the foundation upon which our freedom is built. Listen to The Source WOCA each Thursday at 9 a.m. to Veterans News with Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. You'll hear tributes, information on veterans' issues, and stories that will make you laugh, cry, and feel proud. Veterans News always focuses on the military, past and present, and on our first responders. Veterans News is brought to you each week by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery, keeping you blooming since 1952. Robert, how do you like my design? You're designing a box? That's not a box. It's a doghouse. Rough draft for your rough rough? Sounds like you need personal service. I do? Yes, to print the blueprints. See Mark at the Personal Service Center. He can print blueprints, notarize permit applications, print and mail out invoices, and even provide great-looking business cards. Personal Service Center. That's the one on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street, right? Just look for the yellow signs. Your pedigree palace will be a reality in no time. All right, eight minutes before. Before 8 o'clock, time flies when you're having a good interview, and we're having a really good interview with Dr. Heidi Mayer. She is the superintendent of Marion County Public Schools, and Kevin Christian is with Dr. Mayer. Kevin is a longtime friend and uh, the public relations officer for the school district and uh, also the coordinator for the te- television media productions for Marion County Public Schools. It's a lot to say in one breath. Well, Robin wrote it down, <laughs> Robin wrote it down for me, so <laughs> made, it, made it real easy. Um, well, okay. Well, I like what you're saying so far, and, and uh, so this is why you were elected. People were liking what they were hearing, which which is good. Yes, but what's better is that now I have the opportunity to do it. for my actions to follow my words, yeah, and, and yeah, that's yeah. all I'm asking is that opportunity to show that what I said will happen. We'll do our best. Uh, during the break, Robin asked you if you had something specific, and it sounds like reading is is, an, is a top priority, right? Oh, it is. Oh, my gosh. I love reading, and it, it breaks my heart when a child will say, I don't like to read, and yeah, so I yeah, respond, yeah. you just haven't found the right book yet, that's so it. Let, let's have a chat. Yes. That's it. And you know what? That's why I was always art when people would say, Oh gosh, this goes way back to the beginning of Harry Potter. Like children should be reading about sorcery. And I say, Are you kidding? It's something to read. Who cares? They understand it's fiction. They understand it's make believe. Mm-hmm. You know, but reading is what gets oh my gosh, how how did you ever start reading? Was it because you wanted to read about something you weren't interested in? No. I don't, I don't yeah. We've always read in my house. It was something you were interested mm-hmm. in, right? Yes, and I remember when I was in fifth grade I was reading Roots. Oh and my, my yes, yeah, so and my fifth grade teacher called my mother and complained, and my mother huh? said, "Let her read it. Just let her read it." So mm-hmm. it took me, I think, three she years to get through it. <laughs> yes, it took me about three years. Where did you grow up? In Pennsylvania. In, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, <laughs> of all places to be complaining about reading roots. Wow, uh, it's interesting. Um, Go Steelers. <laughs> there you go. Steelers, <laughs> Pittsburgh. That was, that was the Pittsburgh the little, Steelers, yes. Little, little, little team, oh, the right? Marion County Youth Football League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're the ones that won. <laughs> oh, those two, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers, yes. Uh, we uh, get press releases from Kevin a lot to keep us abreast of everything, and sometimes those press releases uh, say that uh, 
principals have been rotated mm-hmm. to different schools and things. Why would that be? Well, mm-hmm. first of all, you often have prin- we often have principals who've made school administration their career, and like any other field, people retire from that career. Mm-hmm. What makes it so unique for a school district, our size anyway, is that when one person retires, it starts what we call the domino effect. Sometimes you can put an assistant principal into a principal position, but that leaves the assistant principal position open. Mm -hmm. Or you transfer a principal from an elementary school who wants to have more experience at the secondary level. So you put them in at a middle school, well, that leaves the principal position at that elementary school open. Mm -hmm. So before long, you have a domino effect that could involve eight to ten schools, and only two people are leaving. And that's really nice because then you allow not just the students to grow with the curriculum, but the teachers and the principals Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Different leadership styles. Mm-hmm. Sure. Do we have anything new we'll see in the, in the coming year or two? Uh, do we have any new schools that are being built? Any, anything new? New programs that are being introduced into the school system? Well, last uh, school board meeting, we just moved forward with purchasing some land for a new school so that's on the horizon but again we have to look at the pico dollars you know the building dollars okay. the building fund dollars okay. and miss boston ellis who is our director of finance who keeps us <laughs> straight <laughs> and who who is fabulous um is, we're working with her on how to use these dollars the best so uh, the school board um again a great group of people so blessed to work with them and um we're moving forward that way too any any expenses that you would like to see um more money for or maybe things that you think are a waste of money that you'd like to see done away with I've only been on the job two weeks, so we are we are looking at we are looking at everything, but we're looking at how we spend dollars. Okay. And this tonight is a school board meeting, and I know there will be a presentation from the tax referendum committee. Remember, the the voters are so gracious to pass that tax referendum um, a few years ago. So that committee is going to be presenting their findings and, and moving forward with that. So we are looking at how every dollar is spent, and again. When we move forward with the next budget, we are building from the classroom backwards, right. making sure that those teachers are taken care of so they can take care of our students. Because in the end, all decisions are going to be made with the best interests of the student in mind. Well, there was talk a few years ago about doing away with lockers. I don't know if that ever happened or not. And I of- often thought, if if you don't need lockers... I mean, why have them? I don't, I don't even know. Do you still need lockers in schools? We don't build schools with lockers anymore. So that, I'm talking like 20 That's years ago? That's old school. Okay. Yes, sir. Why? Because people don't have textbooks anymore? The kids... Uh, well, it, yeah, the structure of a school setting is not what it used to be. Students typically don't carry, for the most part, don't carry books from class to class. Either those books are provided in the classroom setting or those books are available electronically. Okay. So that's a big saving. Interesting. Gonna, yeah. um, <laughs> yes and no. As Dr. Mayor already knows, just because you're buying a book electronically doesn't make that book cheaper. Oh. Oh, oh really? Oh, no, it my. does not. Oh, the, the publishers really hit it to you <laughs> the then. The publishers huh? still make their profits. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the Kindle is always cheap. <laughs> but you have to buy the book that goes on the Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't buy a book. We buy 2,000 of them. That's there right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you also help out the children that don't have the means to have those computers and things at home. We do. We have programs in place that actually uh, afford students time at school. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, there are community organizations like the library also that make make internet usage available, but our school counselors are the ones who really, uh, I'll borrow Dr. Mayor's phrase, boots on the ground. They are the ones who truly know the needs of many of these Mm -hmm. students beyond the classroom, beyond the academic part. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who know which kids don't come to school appropriately dressed for cold weather. They're the kids, or they're the ones who know which kids go home each weekend with a backpack full of food because they may not have the best of meals at home. Schools operate much differently than they used to 50, 60, 70 years ago because teachers are more involved in students' lives than just teaching them academics. And that's what makes all, all of your crew outstanding, your whole team. Dr. Mayor, thank you for coming in. I hope your visit with us was a pleasant one. It was. I thanks. I hope, hope we see you some more. Uh, and, and, and congratulations on, on your new position. And, and thank you. And for your uh, insightful thoughts on what to do to make the school's district better. 
And uh, Kevin, thank you for coming in. You guys As always, you're gracious. We won't see you probably till after Christmas. I have a great Christmas. Oh, thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. Happy mm-hmm. New Year. And uh, C- Kevin, your music will be earning BMI royalties. I'm honored. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or ASCAP, whatever, whatever it is you get with me. Uh, thank, thank you both for coming thank in. Thank you. Here. We will be right back. Broadcasting.